Back here on Busted Open, Dave LaGreca, Mark Henry, and we talked a lot about it to start today's show, Mark, and that is bipolar rock and roller, and we know him as the voice of NXT, but his story grows and goes a lot deeper than just that, and uh, we're very pleased right now to have us join here today on Busted Open, Moro Ronaldo. Again, Moro, how are you today? Hey, uh, I'm uh, I'm a little emotionally exhausted, but I I I was really uh, happy and and actually it meant a lot to hear from uh, Mark uh, last week, and so I wanted to make sure I made some time uh, for a guy that I've always respected uh, in in the business and and someone who uh, I think uh, would make for an interesting conversation considering our backgrounds and what he's been through in his life as well at the highest level of competition. So really glad to be with you guys. Thank you, Mauro, man. I, I'm telling you, like uh, I was telling Dave in the break, we we all we got along right away because we both like desserts. <laughs> 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 I was like, anybody that you can, you, well, you walk in catering, you see him with two, <laughs> you see him with two or three desserts. It's like, hey, man, we need to talk. <laughs> Cause I want to keep it light. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Dave ask you some of the uh, the serious questions about the documentary, but I just want to let people know that you know, um, you know, being being a Canadian too, um, Morrow is is great at what he does, but he suppresses. He's the only Canadian that I know that doesn't say a boat. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, oh he, hey, hey, all a, I ask for, Mark, all I ask for is, is 5%. I'll take you on the road with me. And, and uh, you know, I, I love this. So please, let's uh, let's make some money for charity. Man, let's do it. I'd be, I'd love to come. Anytime that you need me to come and do a charitable event, and it's going to be raising oh, yeah, money man. towards uh, the advancement of treatment for people with the disorder, I'm there. Like you, you tell man. him to you tell him to give me a plane ticket that I'm on the way. He's on the way. <laughs> we will uh, we will definitely uh, keep you to that. And uh, again, guys, uh, thank you so much for uh, for just bringing me on and helping uh, you know cure stigma because that's really what this entire thing was all about. Uh, Mark, uh, as I've already said, you know, doing what you did in in your powerlifting and weightlifting career, and then being in in the business of sports entertainment for over two decades. Uh, Mental health is something I, I think impacts all of my endeavors, whether it's boxers, mixed martial artists, sports entertainers. But judging by the impact I've received already, this, this goes much, much further. There is a rippling effect to, to people, the military veterans with their PTSD, the, uh, so many children now. And, and I still, the, the reason I wanted to, to make sure that the documentary was as visceral and uncomfortable as many people say it is, is because... We can talk ad nauseum, we can, we can draw pictures, we can make movies, but until you see it firsthand, like everything else, mental health is the invisible illness. We don't, we're not in a wheelchair, I'm not on crutches, I, I don't have a bandage wrapped around my head. So I needed to show people the, the ultimate highs, the devastating lows, and, and in hopes of getting what we're doing now going, getting this conversation started, uh, where we can really try to just, just save one life and man, I, I will be more than, than happy to, to have gone through what I did in making this documentary with my friend Harris. Have you seen any of the NBA's new commercials dealing with uh, mental illness uh, and depression? Uh, they had Kevin Love and uh, Lamar, DeMar DeRozan uh, do commercials saying that they were suicidal, that... Um, no matter how good things got, they were still depressed. Uh, if something tiny, minuscule, uh, to everybody else's, uh, opinion, it would set them off into this tailspin of woe and, and just misery and wanting to be alone and not being, um, being close to their families and friends. Did, did you have, have you seen any of that stuff? And, and, and what do you think about, um, the NBA doing that right now? 
I have definitely seen it, Mark, and I was incredibly emboldened when something like the NBA, which let's face it right now, one of the hottest leagues, it's hip with the kids and, and just all of it, you know, the superstars, the way the games are played. I, I, I was a casual NBA fan for many years, and I'm, I'm a huge uh, basketball fan now because of guys like LeBron James, but also people like Kevin Love and DeMar DeRozan, two uh, terrifically talented players who, again, you look at what they do on the court and, and you see how they live their supposed life and you're like, wow, what, an, you know, wow, what a dream job. And look at these guys. They're killing it and making money and enjoying uh, all of the perks of being a, a baller. And yet, thank goodness for people like that. And, and even Mariah Carey recently doing a, a cover story for People Magazine and her battle with bipolar. So many hip-hop artists and and, and, and people like Logic, who uh, came out with that, that huge hit, uh, and, and, and God bless him for using the Suicide uh, Prevention Hotline number as, as the title. Uh, Demi Lovato, uh, you, you know, we can go on and on. And so timing is everything, my friend. And there is a reason why this documentary is coming out right now, because I finally feel that despite the fact we have so, so far to go in terms of of getting the proper resources, the proper uh, uh, education, and, and just learning to, to cope with what is mental health and finding out more about what causes mental health. So for me, this is just the tiniest tip of the iceberg, my friend. And, and people can say what they want about what this movie is in terms of my life, but it's not truly about me. It is about mental illness and the stigma. I am proving that despite a daily struggle, I am trying to do the best that I can at something I love, and I want to be the best that I can be. But so many people don't get the support that I've gotten. So we need to do something more, you guys, and yep. having this conversation with you right now is, is definitely a part of it. And that's why I think everybody should really tune into that documentary as well, because I think it's eye-opening. And you're right, there's a lot of people reading the reviews that watched it and felt uncomfortable. I found it extremely eye-opening. And the one segment that really hurt me, and I guess kind of hit home for me too, was right after you know you called the Floyd Mayweather fight and it's the biggest fight of your career and you go back to your hotel room and and you, you, you couldn't enjoy it. Like you were... You were going over it in your head about things that you could have done better or things that, you know, and, and reading social media, even though you're getting nothing but love. And, and that really, like, that really hit home. And the fact that you couldn't even take what was your favorite moment and the biggest moment of your career and not even be able to take a moment and enjoy it. Yeah, that's the, the most debilitating and, and, and hurtful things to watch and even experience. And yet, I also believe that for a lot of people, because you're right, I did hear uh, uh, particularly about that scene uh, many times from people in all walks of life. And I also heard where they were being subjected to things that I had already thought to myself, like, well, woe's you. Oh, here's a tiny violin, Mr. Man living his dream. And oh, can't he can't, you know, oh, poor boy thinks uh, he's a perfectionist. So I, I run through voices in my head. I, I already know what I think some demographic or some part of the population is going to think but for whatever reason and again maybe it's just something that all, all of us as a society are finally coming to grips with out of the thousands and i i am blessed and humbled and, and grateful out of the thousands of emails that i've already received my friends there has been one that has said you're a liar you're a fake you're a bad actor i hope you i hope it makes you a lot of money because that's all you're doing this for so because I was expecting way more of those types of reactions and, and, and responses. So maybe, just maybe, we are finally beginning to turn the corner where we can at least just accept mm -hmm. that just because you don't see it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, and it is okay to not be okay. I think it's safe to say to hell with all the trolls, too. There's a lot of people that sit back behind their computers and, and their phones and whatever mobile device that they use to tweet and and go on to all forms of social media. Like, there's cowards. There are people that want to incite a riot. They want to see the world burn. And I always think about that scene in Batman where the, uh, Alfred was telling Batman, you... There was a guy that he once didn't, he didn't want anything. All he wanted to see was the world burn and watch the fallout. Right. 
That was his entertainment to see people in despair and see people in misery. There are people that their lives are so shallow that that is all they have is to see everybody else in misery. To hell with them people, well, Mauro. Well, no, I agree with you, but the reason I even talk about them is because Mark and, and, and I, you know, thankfully all my entire life, I am going to be a soldier in this army of hope and this, this, uh, this, this, you know, this fight against whatever people think because they can hide behind their keyboards. Now the truth has to be heard. And even that leads to so much other issues, as we know, with cyber bullying and, and everything else. This is, we yeah. need more compassion. This is not about being weak. This is not, being, yeah. you know, I know you're an alpha male, uh, Mark Henry of the highest order. There's no effing around with Mark Henry, but, but you're also a compassionate, sensitive human being who's a proud father and husband. And you, you're a hero to so many people. So what, what is wrong with that? Why can't you be both? That's what right. the stigma is all about. Why are men felt to feel shame and they, oh, I'm weak or I'm showing tears? People are like, man, more I haven't cried like this in ages. Well, what's wrong with that? Crying makes me feel better. Don't you want to feel better? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, we, we talked several times about when you were on the road and you're a special human being. And you used to being treated a certain way, just like I am. I'm spoiled rotten. I, I love it when I go to a place and they say, hey, Mr. Henry, this is your green room. And I'm like, really? I get a green room? Wow. You know, and, and then you, you go from you go from getting treated like that to coming into uh, sports entertainment and people are treating you like you're a new guy. And I know that that was hard for you because it was hard for me. And my lashing out was, was just that. Like I was used to a certain standard of treatment. And then it was like wrestling has this whole, for those that don't know, this eat shit and like it mentality. And, and it's preached early. So you have a thick skin because you have to have a thick skin in wrestling. You have to be desensitize yourself to a certain extent because that's what's expected of you and you're going to well, miss your flea market. There is, there is change of foot. And, and honestly, with everything that Paul and triple, you know, triple H and, and even Michael Cohen, what was in the, the documentary, I think that is a huge step in the right direction because you're right. We all evolve and, and yes, sports entertainment with its uh, incredible schedule, uh, and, and the, the fact that you guys are on the road so often, I think all so like football players, hockey players, uh, everybody, we need more mental health resources and more mental health talk. But I truly believe, and there's a reason, you know, that's why I'm in NXT and still with WWE, is that uh, they want to do the right thing as well. And that's another part of this with Showtime, WWE, uh, Bellator, Paramount Network. I hear from so many people who have lost their jobs because of their mental illness. That is that is ridiculous, and that is discriminatory, and that is just downright wrong. So the fact that I have all of this support from so many major corporations, that has to speak for for what I hope will be uh, a change in our our society. Because uh, again, I'm not undergoing chemotherapy. I'm not on dialysis, but I am dealing with something that is life threatening and that is real. And the fact that I am still here. And the fact that I'm functioning at a level that maybe I'm not supposed to be functioning at just speaks to my support network, just speaks to the fact that I can do this talk therapy, and just speaks to the fact that I felt nothing but love from the majority of uh, people that I've come across. We have to start spreading the love. We have to start spreading the hope. You can be competitive. You can be the best. But please, everyone, start showing some empathy for your fellow man. Oh, what a wonderful world it would be. Mara, let me ask you this. Why is it taking so long for people to finally realize this? I mean, what you had to go through, is, you say it in the documentary, your 20s was a blur because you were in and out of the hospital. Why is it taking so long for people to finally realize what bipolar really is? Why is there still racism? Honestly, why is there still racism in our world? I, I say that because this is our society. Look at how mental illness has been portrayed over the years and i i know and i i think you're going well what is it is it a chemical imbalance is it a product of our diet environment is it hereditary is it they still don't know you guys 
I still don't know. All I know is I, I, I'm sometimes, many times, especially during my 20s, this is bullshit, Moro. You are just acting. You're looking for attention, dude. I get it. Now stop and get on with your life. But it doesn't stop. And I find out that I actually don't even remember certain things that I did or went through or experienced. And I, and I know what the pain, the mental anguish, where I am literally, as I say in the documentary, that's not for sensationalism or hyperbole. I know how, I know what I do for a living. <laughs> I know that I sell stuff for a living. I sell the action. I tell stories. I try to convey the drama. But in my real life, when I wake up in the morning and, and one of my first thoughts is, is today the day that I'm going to be exposed as a fraud? Is this the day that I'm finally going to end everyone's burden? And instead, I get to go and do VOs for NXT or Bellator or Showtime Championship Boxing. People that give me the opportunity to live the dream. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? So I want people. There are so many talented artists, singers, uh, actors, uh, activists, teachers uh, that are not getting the opportunity to, to, to create, not getting the opportunity to live their dream because they're afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of what? The Twitter troglodytes, man, bring them on. <laughs> we are in the army of and we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. And I am going to be alive when it happens. Well, I tell you what, I want to be there side by side with you. Um, you know, I've always never been the guy that uh, thought that I was too tough to give somebody a hug. And, you know, you know me better than most. Um, you know, next time I see you, brother, you're going to get the biggest hug. The big, the world's strongest hug is coming your direction. <laughs> hey, don't tell Bailey. Don't tell Bailey, but I'll take it gladly. <laughs> well, we got we got to lighten this up just a little bit because I know the week that you've had, and it must it must be very very difficult to keep going through this. I mean, I mean, you're educating people, you're getting the word out there, but just for your well being, I'm sure you know doing all this media the past week had to had to take its toll. It's incredible because in the midst of it, I had to call uh, Showtime Championship Boxing, uh, Championship Doubleheader Split Site from Washington and Toronto, and then Bellator 200. I had to travel to London, England the day after the uh, premiere in New York. But again, not complaining. If anyone who knows me knows that this is part of my therapy, believe it or not, this is part of what keeps me alive. I've had to make sacrifices. I've made decisions that were very difficult. And the fact that I don't know if I'm ever going to get married or have children. I don't know if I want to even uh, risk just spreading that gene, if that's what it is, because despite the fact that I am, I'm so happy. I've never been happier than I am right now talking to you at this very moment. But the fact is, already this morning, already twice this morning, I've been in a place of, wow, what is going on? Why are you, you know, what the hell? You're, you're, holy, that documentary was ridiculous, dude. How did you, you were, what, what? way to show off all the, you know, what an idiot you are. So it, it's incredible, you guys, but this is what I and millions of others deal with. I just happen to be a guy who talks for a living, so I think it makes it easier for me to share with you guys. But I'm so happy that there are people with much higher profiles, uh, much bigger bank accounts, much bigger brains, that are hopefully going to start to, to really bring mental health awareness to the masses because without mental health, there is no help. Mauro, you, you, are, you are helping in such an unbelievable way. It's kind of like having somebody that that desensitizes people. Uh, I made a comment. I made a comment a few years back, uh, not knowing that um, um, I was hurting somebody. Uh, you know, it's going to it's definitely going to be in my book when I decide to write it. Uh, Darren Young, who came out and said that um, that he was gay and uh, Darren rode with me for a long time. And uh, he, he he was asking me about his hair, like he had his hair spiked up and stuff. And I was like, why are you wearing your hair like that? And he was like, well, it's like a crown. And I was like, well, it makes you look gay. And it, like sticking oh, my wow. foot in my mouth, like it hurt me yeah. to my core because I can only imagine how he must have felt when somebody that he loved and respected said 
a, use the term like it was a bad thing. And I'm sure that there have been times where people have um, used terminologies like, oh, my God, you're crazy or, uh, you know, <laughs> like, have you have you lost it? Are you off your rocker or something? It's something to that effect. I'm sure that stuff like that has been said around you. And um, uh, you doing all of the stuff that you're doing is desensitizing mm-hmm. people and making people realize that they are saying stuff that's that's not good for your mental health and to stop saying it. And uh, kudos to you for all of this that you're doing, because you're helping people in a way that uh, a lot of people will never get that help otherwise. So thank you for, well, on Mark, behalf of all those people. Thank you. Well, and I, I want to say something and thank you for bringing up, you know, your story with Darren Young and thanks for, Owning up to it, and I know, you know, I, I, buddy, I've said things about mentally ill people that make me go, "Well, wait a minute, what, what did you just say? Why did you say it?" It's like you say it, it, it's something like, and I believe there's too much maybe political correctness in our world, and I, I really, you know, I, I think comedy has never been more important and yet harder, and and so the the ones who are very successful, keep, please keep, you know, spreading your voices. But about Darren Young. Darren Young was the first WWE superstar that really, truly uh, befriended me uh, in the TV locker room, made me feel welcome, and I had some of my greatest uh, memories in the locker room laughing and just getting to know him better, and, and, and Darren Young is, uh, is my brother, and I, will, I, I can't believe how strong he is in what he is doing uh, in terms of blocking the hate, and this all goes hand in hand. Uh, mental health impacts everybody. It doesn't matter how rich, how famous, how big, how how successful you are. And so uh, Darren Young is another soldier in the Army of Hope. And and you thank me, Mark, but I thank you, and I thank everyone who is listening, everyone who is helping to cure stigma. I had one gentleman come up to me at the screening in Canada, in Toronto, well-dressed, good-looking guy in his 30s, could tell probably looked successful. He came up to me, said, I went into this documentary. I was the guy who stigmatized people. I, I was the guy who didn't get this and, and thought it was a bunch of bullshit. He he then uh, started crying, and he said, thank you for, for curing my stigma. And I'm like, you know what, man? Wow. That's it. I'm done. The doctor is a success. Mm. Thank you. Wow. And if, then you, they, if you can save just one, yep. sometimes that's the mentality you got to have. Amen. And the name of the documentary is Bipolar Rock and Roller. You can see it on Showtime. It's it's being run multiple times, so definitely check it out. Mauro, I know this has been a tough week for you. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to Mark and I this morning. Oh, you guys have been uh, incredible. Thank you for your support. And Mark, uh, again, man, I appreciate uh, you know everything you've done over the, the course of your career and just even what you did right now talking about uh, with Darren Young. That's what we need. I, I The truth is... You know, it's cliche, I guess, and trite now, but the truth sets us free. And we all need to be a little freer of stigma. And, and, and just when you ask somebody, how are you, really mean it. And whoever you're asking, make sure they're answering exactly how they feel and not just giving you a, a reason to get on with your day. Awesome. Awesome. What a, Well said. Well said. Mauro, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Well, Keep we'll in touch.